I had a ton of bad idea while we were there. Very bad idea. Call of Cthulhu is nothing but bad ideas. Mm-hmm. It's weaponizing bad idea. <laughs> Alrighty, so this is uh, session 38 of uh, Mask of Naharli Uh Following a, uh, a brief sojourn into the Dreamlands, courtesy of a uh, panicked spell from Evelyn. Uh, you guys encountered some ghouls. Uh, chose wisely when confronted with uh, with some options, uh, and as a result, were brought back to the waking world. Uh, and uh, both Miles and Evelyn have had their uh, their brush with insanity, at least for the time being, cured. I'm sorry, guys. Are you hearing me right? Yep. <laughs> Okay, thanks. Sorry, uh, old man with the computer. <laughs> no worries. Um, but yes, uh, apparently somebody somewhere, something somewhere, uh, has decided to provide you at least a modicum of assistance and a little bit of a reprieve from the uh, mind-shattering things that you guys have witnessed. Uh, but speaking of, uh, when you guys arrived back in... Uh, back in Egypt, back in the pyramid, uh, the ritual room where previously there had been hundreds of cultists uh, doing a ritual to bring back their, uh, the Queen Natakris. Um, there, was a, there was a slaughter while you guys were absent. Uh, you found bits and pieces of cultists spread over a very wide area. Uh, large cat-like paw prints in the sand uh, and just mass destruction at the uh, at the bent pyramid uh, there is no doubt in your mind that the uh, the the cult of the dark brotherhood uh, or the cult of the the dark pharaoh uh, has had a setback that's an understatement that's right um, so the the cult uh, from what you can gather, there were, there were like hundreds of cultists in this thing, and there are hundreds of people's worth of body parts strewn about, you know, on casual glance. Uh, and Chris, do those I, sorry those those paw prints they look like the size of like a big predator cat, like a lion or a tiger or something else. Uh, to to Miles's keen eye, they definitely look like very 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 large lion. But 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 within the realm of normal still. Uh, in terms of like shape and everything, yes. Uh, but I'm just thinking like if it, like is it would it be an abnormally large lion like? Oh, perhaps yeah. something. Oh heck yes. Uh, the the paw prints are probably like a good twenty thirty feet across. Whoa. Uh, but other than that, they do in fact look like a lion print. 
You can probably make out like the little pads on the on the toes. Uh, but the the cult here is uh, is in disarray. Uh, before you guys were abducted away to the dreamlands, uh, Miles and uh, uh, I'm trying to think who else. I think it was Miles and Eugene managed to put uh, several rifle rounds, shotgun rounds into the high priest, dropping him before you were taken out. Uh, so really all that's left here in Egypt is if you guys want to go through with the ritual for the Eye of Light and Darkness and seal the area, knowing that it does come with a significant cost. Uh, but we will... Uh, turn it over to you guys I, I believe when we left off you guys had retreated back to your hotel to kind of decide your next step so we'll uh we'll pick up there so what next Well, uh, we could go to back to China, to Australia, or to Kenya. Those are where we're needed most. And we are not performing the ritual to close the possibility of them doing something. Yet. We should. We should do that here first. Yes. Right. Yeah. First step would be to perform that ritual. I would take the time to consult the Egyptologist library before we go. I'll we'll have many occasions to well cross reference. Things. I mean, I mean, I, I don't want to be like that guy, but I'm gonna be it. We have to consider the time of traveling, which will be several months. So maybe research are not. I mean, we need to do the ritual of uh, the eye of night and day, and we just missed our window to do it. So it... when's the next window in a month? I don't know. I need to get to the star chart and check in seven it. years. No, 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 no. It's it has to be done under the full moon. The new moon? I forget which moon. One of the moons that's once a month. I mean, we were checking to do it under the new moon, but I need to check if there is anything that allows us other kind of events that we could take advantage of before that. Because losing a month is hard. But uh, As a matter we... of fact, is the ritual mandatory? Kind of. Kinda is not yes. So, about the ritual, what we understand is, even if the ritual fails, there is widespread destruction. I think we already crossed that bridge. But I meant to the local area where that ritual is done, unless we have closed it off. So if someone, even if three people come here in seven months or eight months or how many more, months we have and they try to perform the ritual widespread destruction they won't they might not be able to complete it because it might fail at other points throughout the globe because of us but here there will be widespread destruction but if we do the ritual the ritual can't even start the the, the end of the world ritual can't even start if we cast the light eye of light and shadow and so there will be no destruction here. That's my understanding. I, I That's really complicated. I, I was not able to simplify that more. It's really outside of my expertise. Let's just we, say that I had more casual pillow talk than that with whatever. I mean, we technically have stopped the cult here. Although I think they stopped themselves with their ritual. So... Uh, Another most the reason is, not to, to do one. I mean, we've we need, seen what a badly planned ritual can do. 
Yeah, but we need to do the ritual and stop the cult at every spot because if they just send a couple of people behind our back to do the ritual, we're going to be fucked. But I we think need they need all of the five spots to be open. So if we just manage to totally close one... We, no. we already checked that option. That's not enough. So what happens is if the... If you're trying to summon it and your ritual fails for some reason, so if we show up mid-ritual and we kill everyone there, because the ritual has started, it is a calamity upon calamities. How what was the death toll last time? Uh, uh, like a series of volcanoes exploded and like 200,000 people died? Millions. Millions of people died with a failed ritual. Not sure we're ready to go back to China right now. But well, as Kenya a matter of fact, I've never been. Yeah. You're not missing anything. Unless you really have a soft spot for student protests that lead to people dying in the streets. There's plenty of that. I mean, I'm getting kind of fed up with all of those things that end of the world and dying so i mean might be a nice change of pace student hmm. protest might be better to uh i mean the benefit of china is that we know where we need to go but of course i'm gonna follow you i mean i'm i said i'm in so i'm gonna be in and i'm gonna I'm just voicing my concern about that ritual, seeing that one just like failed and, well, we were in the dreamlands because of the foul understanding that a creature from another, another dimension, and then we came back to see the desolation that a failed ritual can do. I mean, how can I say that with a straight face? This was not one of the rituals. No, no, I know, I know. And I mean, thank you, Evelyn, for saving us. I mean, I'm not criticizing. I'm just like, if we cannot talk dimensional shambler, maybe it's going to be hard. I mean. I'm afraid. You would be an idiot if you were not afraid. This is scary. And the question is, do we perform the ritual of light and darkness here today in hopes of saving millions of people? And if we perform it today, my understanding, and I'm not an expert here, is that because we perform it here in Cairo, and Cairo is one of the places that they need to perform this ritual at, it is no longer the end of the world. We have stopped whatever is coming that would be coming. Well, sir. You Everything should... afterwards is how do we minimize the damage of other failed rituals consider we have blocked the portal here is that I, correct i think one is not enough one will make the ritual harder to perform but i don't think one is enough Completely. how many is enough i'm not sure that's why i wanted to check the book that's what that's why i want to make research so we know we need at people. least one though to be clear Yes, definitely. Uh, but so, I mean, so, how many weeks can we spend doing research? Well, I don't want us to spend weeks. I just want to check when's the next best time to do the ritual. Wait a few days for that. Check while we are we can, while we are here, and then move on. I because mean, we need to perform the ritual here. At yes. least here. At least one spot. We are alive. We might not be alive to do the next one. 
No, they that's totally now. true. And I mean, you should be a salesperson because you're selling a hard, a hard bargain here. Let's we do need, it. Let's perform this ritual. The only thing question is, how long do we have to wait before performing the next ritual? And what do we do between now and performing the ritual? And get, so and do if, we need to get ready or do we research or what else do we need to do? If we need by to, any chance check, it's one month, what are we doing? Let's find out first. Okay. Chris, what's the requirement for the, the, the spell of night, light and darkness? Uh, from what you understand, uh, without further research, uh, it can be performed. Um, basically, you start at the afternoon of the new moon and then completed, you know, the next morning sort of thing. And when is the next new moon? Uh, it would be like 29 days. I just beeped myself out by not hitting my button. Right now we need to decide what will be our next spot. Next destination. I think originally we had talked about Kenya, which is not far from here, not too far from here. Can I ask it for not a dry country? I mean, our next target are Australia and, and Kenya. Oh, dry in that sense. I agree with that man, then. Not a dry country. <laughs> I don't know if Kenya is dry. Australia is more cer most certainly not. No. Yeah. No, definitely not. Uh, and ni neither is Kenya. Kenya, uh, Kenya, at this point in time, is a British colony. Cause 29 we... days. How do we make 29 days valuable and how many days are left before the end? Let's check what date we are because we haven't checked that yet. We are May 25th. Okay, not that bad. Chris, do you have the math on that? How many days are left? I will tell you in just a sec. So Alvin comes back and saying, we need to start treating the days we have left as a limited resource. Like our sanity. Uh, you have eight months and one day. So eight months is about 240 days. Yep. So we have like 241 days. 246. And we, but... 246 and we, days. And we should fuck up every cult and possibly close every spot and we need to spend 30 of those days here how much time do we need to go to um to kenya let's check that uh okay so from cairo to kenya um and miles you've traveled this a couple of times you're you're well familiar you kind of have two options uh you can go by boat uh you can go from uh from cairo to uh, mombasa uh that takes about two weeks uh, there is a little bit of a like a, a two-day stay stay over part way through but you're looking at about two weeks uh, from Cairo to Mombasa. Uh, the other option is uh, you can go overland, uh, which uh, Miles has probably done in the past and knows it takes about six months. So not an option. Let's not do overland. <laughs> 
Uh, Overland is great if you're going hunting because you go up the Nile, uh, through the Sudan, uh, through like deserts and swamps and so on and so forth. But it's a like a six month hike. It's not uh, it's not vehicular travel. It is a hike. I fail to see the appeal. <laughs> I mean, on the boat, we can play cards like civilized people and drink. We usually read. And from Mombasa to Kenya. Is Mombasa in Kenya? Mombasa is in Kenya. It's like the main port. Um, you, know, from your, you know from your notes that most of the people that Jackson spoke with were in Nairobi, which is inland from Mombasa. And you can take a train from Mombasa to Nairobi to get there. So, let's say I can go to try to get uh, to know when and how much would be a travel to Kenya by boat. That time, Eugene, you can go to the library to try to skim the books to see if you can find some resources. Yeah. We should also think about relocating our friend at the uh, mental hospital. Do you want Have us to bring them with us? If the sure. trip is long enough and we can hire someone to help them on the way. Didn't you say that you had like an estate for? Oh, finances isn't the problem. So we'll try to, we'll try the to hire somebody. Fine. I can the, add that problem, to my list. The problem is finding someone with the skills that we need. Who's willing to travel with us. Could try to, to have them send somewhere safer in here. Same they thing. They don't have to follow us. We can hire someone and send them all to the States with help. Yes, we need to find someone that is reliable, though. That's the same problem that Evelyn just said. We could contact the uh, the lawyer so we find us someone. Telegram them? Yeah. Gary just takes a piece of paper and take notes. So telegram to the lawyer. And, he has uh, a little black box of people we can hire that are reliable you can probably find us someone who can escort them back to safety so and then boat tickets and uh be sure that our friends stay relatively safe until the help come am yeah. i forgetting anything I'm just gonna I'm gonna check the ritual to see if there's any other option for us to do it at some other point. But I think the new moon is necessary. Sorry, out of character, did I miss the decision on where we're going after this? I proposed Kenya because it's the closest one. Because Australia oh. is a fair way away. Sold. And it feels a bit more pressing. I, I don't know. It's just a bit of feelings. But we had a lot of, uh, lot of information that leads to Kenya. Uh, Australia seems to be the origin point of all the strange bits and pieces we have seen. But all of the harsh things seems to have been happening in Kenya. So I don't know. That's, that's just a feeling. Yeah. And it seems to me at one point... Um... Miles could definitely identify the uh, the um, the mountain of the Black Wind, which has cropped up numerous times. You guys saw a painting of it or a picture of it or a vision of it. I can't remember exactly which, but Miles identified that as a mountain in Kenya, and that has cropped yeah. up numerous times. So there too, we know exactly where we need to go. Well, we need to find that mountain, but yes. And the expedition that were supposedly killed were supposedly killed there, even if we found out that lots of the people in the expedition are still alive and well at different places in the world. So seems to be a, a, a pivotal point, Kenya. So that's what I, 
they had in mind. So is that it, though? I agree well, with go to Kenya. It's closer. <laughs> if time is a resource and we have a choice between spending a long amount of time to go to Australia and then come back, it's that same amount of time twice for only one seal. If we're able to get to Kenya and provide a seal there, then we only have to do the trip to Australia once within the time delay. Milady, yeah. are you okay with that? I don't have a better idea, so it's fine. In the interim, if we are spending a month here, let's figure out what we can do to get ahead of everything in Kenya. So there was a mountain. We can try to identify that mountain. There are newspapers, international and otherwise. We can start looking at those here. And we can start figuring out what we need to perform the light and darkness. And ritual. we'll need we'll need to find people to help us in Kenya to perform the ritual again. But if we perform the ritual and leave just after, it take us two weeks to get there, and then we'll have two weeks before we can perform the ritual again over there. So if we can find some help over there, it's, it's going to be easier. But we could try to change that. Uh, Gary will take his paper, fold it, put it in his breast pocket, and just say, then I'm going to take my leave. I have my tasking ahead of me. Thanks. All right. So with some semblance of a plan... Um... Chris, did you just imply we were going to swallow the souls of helpless porters? The, the ritual does not necessarily require willing participants. Who needs a soul? Um, what is it? Uh, but yeah, so you guys, uh, you guys have some time. You can decide what you would like to do. Um, if you know that you're going to be here for like a month, uh, for those of you whose sanity might be on the low side, uh, you could actually look at uh, at hiring a, a private doctor or nurse. I know Miles has already kind of started that process, uh, which would give you a chance to maybe get a little bit of sanity back. Uh, I don't think anybody is wounded. I don't think anybody needs to actually recover from that. Uh, so, uh, we'll just kind of, we'll kind of montage scene it. Uh, but you guys can de uh, just describe what you were doing over the course of the month. Uh, and I will say as well, if anybody wants to, if they don't have anything else that they want to do, uh, a month, I say, is long enough to like train up in a skill. The only thing that I have planned will be to uh, arrange help for our indisposed friends. Uh, check when we can... Uh, the frequency of uh, travel to Kenya and uh, the telegram to uh, Sir Lawyer there to talk about the fact that we have two people here who is that uh, are in dire need of help. Okay, and maybe try to learn how to shoot a freaking handgun. Okay. Is that training in addition to the XP we normally get, or it is just the um, reasoning for the spend that we have? Yeah, no, it's this is in addition. This is specifically taking time to train, kind of like you do like we do when you travel between uh, locations. So you can uh, you can pick up a skill that you haven't already put points into at a D10, or you can raise a skill that you've already put points into by a D6. I am going to train how to shoot better. Okay. 
sec here, I'll click development mode on. Uh, so yeah, so that all over the course of time, spending some time, uh, probably like, you know, out in the desert, uh, you know, hunting snakes or whatever, get a D6 added to your handgun skill. Good roll. Since uh, I've never put uh, any points on my handgun, can yeah. I there? Uh, yeah. yeah, it would be a D10. Okay. How do I do that? Uh, just roll a D10. Uh, in the, the two bubble uh, tab, you, in the bottom, you got dice shape. You can click on them to uh, to roll them. Chris, does it fit in the experience tab or the personal tab? Uh, the experience tab. So that would be a f four. Yep. Perfect. Uh, and actually, you guys may as well, yeah, um, you guys may as well click your role for development as well and see what other skills may go up. Everybody? Yep. Sorry, what are we clicking? Uh, the, uh, the development. Yeah, I'm in that tab. I'm just not sure what I clicked. Uh, I think you already did. Your let's see, your intimidate went up and your occult went up. Oh, previously, okay. Yep. Yep. So what, for tonight, pick something, and if I don't have anything in it, add a D10. Otherwise, a D4 or a D6. Exactly. And you can spend some time training, or you know, just hanging out with the other people in the in the party. Basically, because advancement in Call of Cthulhu is very slow, so some extra opportunities are not uh, not horrible. Holy cow, my occult went up. Wow. <laughs> your, your spot hidden went up significantly. Oh, yeah. They all went up. Like, well, listen went up by 9, occult went up by 8, spot hidden went up by 10. Anthropology was the only one that it was like it only went up by four, but still, it's better than. Yes, still went up. Yeah. Mm. Uh, what yeah is I can't seem. I can't seem to click into my XP column to add. Mm -hmm. Oh, one sec here. Uh, there, I'll put it. I have to put it in character creation mode for you to actually add XP. There we go. All right. Um, so what is, uh, what is Eugene ju doing during this month? Uh, I'm gonna try to study the Ritual of Light and Darkness. See if okay. our only option is the, the New Moon. I wanted to go check at the library. Uh, they said they would give us access to what they have. So, uh, I'm trying to... I don't want to raise a skill. Just try to understand better what we're dealing with. And uh, see if they have books that we don't have that would have interesting information, rituals, or things we could use. All right. Perfect. And I'll specifically be looking this month to see if uh, like the, 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 the ghoul from the Dreamland talked about a couple of passageways from the Dreamland to reality. So I'm looking into text that talks about that or actual pathway from here to Gotcha. Okay. Uh, Gary's making travel arrangements uh, and arrangements for your friends. What is uh, what is Miles going to do during this time? Uh, let's see. What did I... Okay, so that didn't go up. That didn't go up. Okay. I had my eye on this one. I am going to study medicine. Ooh. All right. Uh, it's easy enough to basically find some volunteering opportunities. There's, you know, little clinics here and there, and uh, enough for you to start to uh, get some basics under your belt at any rate. So I roll what? A D10? A D10. A D10. A D10. Oh, you, you do have the basics. So in the brown thing, I put one. 
Uh, yeah, under the uh, the XP column. Sorry, Chris. When you're gonna have two minutes after having talked with everybody else, uh, I'm gonna have a question for you. Sure. Sorry, the XP one is what the furthest brown. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's the uh, furthest one to the right. Okay. Uh, what is uh, what is Evelyn doing during the month? Uh, Evelyn is getting in touch with uh, Dr. Kafour okay. uh, to get our books back okay. and whatever English translations he has of the scrolls that we have that I couldn't read before because I don't have any other languages um, so that I can read those, like copy them over and read them while we're traveling. Hey, do we have anyone who can actually cast the spell? Uh, uh, both uh, both Evelyn and then at uh, this point Eugene have studied it. Uh, so they can certainly try to cast it. The, the fun thing with uh, Magic and Cthulhu is you don't know if you can cast it until you actually try to cast it. Even if you do it in a panic and don't really mean to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can those scholars, I guess that's part of the thing, Can th those scholars can't help us, right? They're not willing to sacrifice their power for us, I guess, um, to ask them. No, but uh, Dr. Kafour's group, the, um, uh, is that the sort of snafferu, uh, they they are willing to help you. So you you do have a, uh, a significant number of individuals that are willing to help you, and they understand the cost, and they are willing to assist. Oh, that's a relief. So yeah, Chris. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, I've not put all of my occupational points uh, on my character sheet. Can you check that, please? Uh, yeah, it looks like you have uh, like 45 occupational points to spend. Uh, so by all means, you can uh, you can put those in the skills you would like to put them into. The uh, the occupation skills are the uh, the middle of the gray boxes. All right. Uh, so over the course of the month, um, checking um, you know kind of checking the international newspapers. Um, there, there are reports of strange occurrences here and there, uh, the sort of thing that previously probably would not have caught your attention, uh, but you're kind of on the lookout for anything, uh, out of the ordinary. Um, but there's nothing that you can pinpoint as being directly related to what you're investigating. Uh, it's just, uh, it seems like as you, as you delve deeper and deeper, you become more acutely aware of the situations that are not quite normal. Uh, but you're focused enough to go like, okay, this is, this is weird, but it's not related to what we're doing. This uh, is weird, but it's not my kind of weird. Right. Uh, it's just, you, you've all become cognizant of the fact that you are you are more easily able to discern you know, shit that's a that that story there is covering something we have a type now yeah you have a type uh eugene um most of the books in the library here at the egyptian museum uh are basically they, they back up what you already know Okay. Uh, however, uh, there is one book in particular that draws your attention. Uh, it is, find the description here. The Libre de Ghouls. It is not the Libre de Ghouls. I believe you, I think you guys might actually have a copy of Libre of Honus. Yeah, I think we have it. <laughs> we do, but it's in French. Oh, and fine, more importantly, I, French. I figured it might be relevant because we just ran into actual ghouls. 
Uh, so yes, there is a series of scrolls, uh, 10 of them in particular, uh, written in Arabic on what appears to be very fine goatskin parchment. The author's name on like the little nameplate is what draws your attention. It is written by Abdul Al Hazard. Oh God. <laughs> I know that name. Oh no. Oh dear. It's, it's actually goatskin. Right. Go. It's not the mm -hmm. It's not mm -hmm. the <laughs> yep. Sure. Uh, like for those of you who might be tuning tuning in for the first time, anyone want to explain who Abdul Al Hazard was? Uh, Abdul Al Hazard is the author of the Necronomicon. Necronomicon. Yeah. Oh, that guy. Yes. Yep. That's why out of play I know, but it, in depth, yeah. uh, yeah. I would like copies of all of them, please. Yeah. Uh, you can you can actually make a Cthulhu Mythos roll. Because what could possibly go wrong? He already agreed, like back in uh, my notes ages ago, that he would let us have copies. Uh, so yes, yeah, so Eugene, you do recognize that name, and you you understand that this it, this is not the original um, uh, uh, Alazif. This is uh, a translation uh, based on the the age. As you talked to Doctor Kafour, this was basically brought to Cairo from Damascus by Saladin. Uh, it is, however, mostly complete. And believed to be the last uh, Arabic copy in existence. the The information contained in those scrolls would be immeasurably valuable. And probably a big and hit. evil. Uh, with, since you got a hard success, you are aware that the uh, the information contained within those scrolls is very dangerous. I assume it's only something. That's I'll a Eugene Magnet just saying that. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I assume it's just a something I can. I I won't be able to borrow that. I'll be able to check it. At their place but nothing more you will be able to basically access it here but you cannot unless you want to try to steal it i'm not into crime just yet okay and they make copies of that too if you want uh they can they can copy some of the information for you but it will take weeks we Look, have we four of them <laughs> um I'm still in development. Yep. Okay, what is it that it's waiting for me to do? Uh, was there anything that you were raising? Oh, I didn't know that was still an option where I was yeah. um, getting the books and starting the reading. Yeah, if, if you're like getting books and, and reading, then you don't have to worry about it. You don't have time to actually train up a skill. Yeah, well, that was my plan was to copy the books over so I can have them to read on the trip. Okay, perfect. All right. Uh, so yeah, so they will uh, they will work with the translator with you. So the books that you guys have that are in languages other than English, they will, over the course of the month, get mostly translated into English for you. Um, before we do the ritual, uh, I had found in one of the book the, the Vorish sign. Yep. Uh, I wanted to try to practice that because it will make the ritual easier to cast if I remember well. It will. And since I don't want to fuck up on the, the, the Eye of Light and Darkness, <laughs> I'd like to learn the Vorish sign to help me cast. Okay. But I will be studying at the library. All right. For the month. See what I can get out of that terrible book.
nothing on the on the dreamland from what i research um no there are there are there are stories that people who travel uh through the ghoul tunnels can enter into the dreamlands ghoul tunnels are usually found in like burial sites cemeteries graveyards similar um but then the ghouls tend to eat them and they don't come back yeah i'm just thinking that if we found a, a ritual or a, a way to access the dreamland more safely we could bring our friend that has gone insane over there nothing that you can find in anything here i'll keep looking uh and if you if you want to actually study uh the alazif it will take you 68 days to get a basic understanding of it 68 days yep <laughs> damn i don't have 68 days you will want to go to australia mm -hmm. Yeah, Australia, the ride to Australia is long, right? So it's a it's about a month to get to Australia from pretty much anywhere, uh, and then travel across Australia is a bitch. Uh, but give me one sec here. Uh, so. Uh, I'm just looking for like different versions of the Necro Necronomicon to basically indicate what your uh, translation might. Oh, the translated version you could probably skim through in about a month. Could I enlist assistance to translate to to copy it in Arabic? Because I read Arabic, I don't need it translated. Um, yeah, basically they're going to put together like a kind of like a Cliff's Notes version for you. Okay. Um, so it's not a, it's not as good as having the actual book, uh, and it'll take them like three or four weeks to get that done. And then you'll be able to read it and it'll take you about a month to, okay, to do so. Uh, but that's assuming that you're helping them with the translation over the month. Yeah, I, I can do that. Perfect. Uh, That's gonna mean I'm not gonna study other other books, but I can do that well or in the book. Okay. Uh, and, uh, I'll still try to to try the Vorus sign before we do the the Eye of Light and Darkness to give us. A okay. Uh, make a uh, power roll. If I can fit that in the in the schedule. Power. Ooh, that's a good roll. You managed to do it without destroying anything in the process. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you get the, the basics of the voice sign down. It does seem to kind of channel your power a little bit better. Allow you to focus more. All right. Uh, Evelyn, is there any book in particular you're reading over the month here? Uh, I don't have a current book list. Of the stuff that wasn't in English. Uh, let's see. So I don't know which book I'm reading now. Uh, there is the Equinox Divise, which was in French. It tells of experiences traveling the world, and particularly the re uh, regional customs and beliefs of Northern Africa and Asia and Europe. That sounds like it'd be handy. <laughs> Mainly the bits about uh, Northern Africa. More immediately, at least. I mean, she's getting copies of everything to read while they're traveling, so she can start with this, though. Unless there's a list in one of our Discord. I'm trying to find that. Check. <laughs> trying to find it back. I know I have it somewhere. Yeah, and I know if I scroll back a few months, I've got a list too. 
but it takes scrolling oh, back it. a few months. I got it. We got Africa's Dark Secrets, Amongst the Stone, uh, Equinox DVZ, Final Confession of Gaspar Figueroa, Liber Ivonis, Life as a God, Selection de Livre Divin, and Panoptic Manuscript. And I think we have the Book of Z- Dyson. Yes. The one we I've didn't read have on that list was the Song of the Jinn. I've read the English ones. Bone of Madness what? Oh, because uh, you're, <laughs> your, your sanity is tenuous at best and you're reading bad books. Yeah, yeah, I am. Have you thought about seeing a doctor while we are there? Just saying. Uh, I think it was hinted at at one point, but uh, didn't our sanity issues get taken care of? Uh, yeah, but it didn't increase your sanity of 39. Well, no. I mean, 34, thank you. It's 34 now <laughs> because you read another book. <laughs> yeah. yeah book, am I right? Oh, I tell you. There... And then... And then everyone's surprised that Alvin still has over 90 points. points of like, I am not reading that stuff. <laughs> They're spine tingling, that's for sure. <laughs> All right. So, Evelyn. Um, so, yeah, so you guys are doing about doing your things, you know. Um, practicing your, your, your skills, volunteering at like, uh, clinics, making travel arrangements. Um, you guys don't really see much of each other over this time, you know, kind of like passing in the hallway, maybe having a meal together. Um, partway through Evelyn just doesn't seem to be around anymore. Oh, she's done that before. Fugue is a thing, eh? Well, she went missing for a little while, uh, a couple of times. There was a time on the trip from New York to England that no one saw her for a few days. And then there was a time when she was in a, uh, an artist's attic and went missing. <laughs> the last time she went missing <laughs> for any amount of time, she tried to kill herself. So uh, Alvin's going to jump on that. Okay. I'm sorry, what? Didn't she slit her wrists? Yes, she did. I don't think she told... Did she tell everybody, or did she just tell Luther? I can't remember. I thought she had just told Luther. I thought the old party knew, but not the new people. But yeah, maybe. Be, that could be. I might be. I remember that we were taking turns watching you for fear that you might hurt yourself. That's all I remember. Well, there I was the time... Was the black eyes thing or something. Uh, I think that was just a general issue when we were in the... Is that when, like, Luther had Evelyn, like, tied to her chair so she couldn't leave the room? No, this was on the boat. Oh. All right. Uh, so why doesn't Alvin give me a tracking roll? You will find her. This will just kind of determine how long it's going to take. Instantly. Uh, <laughs> apparently, apparently no time at all. She was behind that... <laughs> She is behind that curtain. <laughs> Professor Evelyn with the pipe in the study. <laughs> All right. Uh, actually, uh, because you wrote so well, we'll say that uh, Alvin actually gets contacted. Uh, let me find the name. Uh, 
Uh, but you're contacted by uh, one of the doctors at the uh, at the mosque where your uh, where your other friends currently are. Contacted. As uh, in... uh, so yes, the uh, the the uh, Amon from the uh, the mosque of Ibn Talan, uh, which is the insane asylum here in Cairo, uh, will contact you to say that one of your uh, one of your associates uh, has been brought in. Woohoo! So I'm gonna go get her. Brought in for what exactly? Uh, she was uh, causing a disturbance. Um, uh, claiming that. Uh, the the dark pharaoh is coming the dark pharaoh will rule all um throwing stones at people in the streets who uh did not seem to accept her message definitely sounds like her i mean it's a disturbance it wasn't like she was lying or anything just she was upsetting people with the truth i get it Because she was she was brought here for uh, safekeeping, and I thought you should know. Absolutely, I'll be right there. Hey guys, have you seen Evelyn? Uh, I'm gonna go get her. She's at the uh, sanatorium. Oh, great! She went to visit. I think she is a patient. I'll find out more when I'm there. Aren't we all? Uh, Alvin says, like, in the most nonchalant, of course she's in the sanatorium kind of the way. Shouldn't we all be? Indeed. <laughs> I don't think Gary register. I, um, so, yes. Yeah, so, you know, they they will gladly release her into your you know, into your care. Uh, she's, uh, you know, they, they basically they've held her for long enough to determine that she's not uh, she's not a threat to herself or others. Uh, Evelyn, you actually don't remember anything over like yep. the last twenty four ish hours. Uh, when you kind of like you, you basically kind of come to your senses just as they are unlocking. Uh, the door to uh, to release you into uh, into Alvin's care. So I sign whatever paperwork I need to sign. And I tell her to be quiet until we get out of here, and then I obviously ask the loaded question. So what exactly happened? I was about to ask you that. Why am I here? That is not the answer he was hoping to get. Uh, what do you mean? Did you lose time again? I... Don't know. I remember reading. And if I had woken up in my room, I would assume I had just dozed off. But I what day do you think it is? Now. Chris, what day was it when I started reading? Uh, let's say it was probably like it would have taken some time for the translation, so we'll say it was like Saturday the uh, Saturday the thirtieth. Uh, it's, oh. it's now Wednesday, June third. Before we get too far in the month, I had a real realization that I wanted to bring to the, to the group. I'll let that scene go, but I, I just thought of something. I... Saturday? It's Wednesday. And Evelyn just kind of goes pale. Not that she's, you know, all that healthy and colorful normally, but... I've been here for four days. 
Three no, days. they picked you up today. Where was I? Empty your pockets on the way. We're going to meet everyone else. We'll figure that out on the way. Pockets. Mm -hmm. You haven't no. worn many dresses, have you? Dresses don't have pockets? No. No, they don't, Elvin. Why do you think women carry purses? Because if we had pockets, we'd be able to run faster. Uh -oh. so because we wouldn't need to grab a bag. Um, assuming she still has her purse. I don't know if her purse is, was left behind at the hotel or not. Uh, it was probably left behind. Yeah, I would think. There's Do no I receipts, have receipts? There's nothing. How would I have receipts? I didn't have my purse. What would I have bought with nothing? Chris, I'm a trained investigator. I'm going to give her the once over. I'm not going to pat her down or anything like that, but I'm going to take a look at the state <laughs> of, of what she's in, her clothes are in, and I'm going to make a, a guess. Uh, she, she definitely could use probably like a bath, some freshening up, change of clothes. She is, uh, she's definitely, your best guess is she's probably just been out on the streets. So you may have been wandering the town. We're going to have to follow up on that um, to see what kind of trouble you might have gotten yourself into. Last time you lost time, we only found out about it later. And you said that you'd done something terrible. I, I don't. I don't remember exactly. Yes, well, there's no real need to. And she'll kind of look away and rub one of her wrists absently. Um, I think I would just like to go back to the hotel, get some water. Chris, there's no blood on her. She didn't murder someone or anything like that. Like... <laughs> um, not that you can tell. Do you still have your... Oh, no, you didn't bring a purse. I was going to ask you if you still had your weapon with you. I hope it's still back at the hotel. I bring her back to everyone, and we're going to have a little discussion about this. Perfect. So yeah, you guys can get back to the hotel. Okay, so let's have a little conversation here, everybody. I thought we agreed to not let people read books alone. Usually, uh, Miss Collins was reading book at the Institute. So there was plenty of people around. Did you bring some home? Evelyn? Sorry, what? Uh, I was wondering if you were reading at uh, the museum or if you brought some book home. Uh, no, they gave me English copies of some things that we only had in other languages that I couldn't read. Oh, I see. That uh, Adam, sounds like I started reading them at home. Yeah, I, I was reading them here in the hotel, yes. I, is the book still in the room? Yep. Uh... 
was French. It was French. Ah, uh, Equinox Divise. Which I'm probably pronouncing wrong, but. Close enough. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares? It's French. <clears throat> the French. So this is what. There's a lot. Ah, well, they're not here. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> Good things. You don't want to deal with so... it. So. <laughs> but this is the book I was reading. Um, essentially, travels, uh, rituals, and cultural significance in Northern Africa. So to answer your question, no, she was not accompanied by she was reading. I was not what? Uh, you were alone. Yes, I would have been here. And I don't remember any of you being in my room at the time. So it is a rule rule, or it is a rule? Well, we had some episode, some people had an episode while reading, so we decided maybe it was not the best idea for people to read alone. For a while, while we were in England. Before Bill left. Where neither Eugene nor I were. Right. Um, I don't think that that's a rule that we decided to do away with. We didn't really follow up on it, though, either. I mean, Luther and I tended to keep fairly close company when the topic of books came up. Or Dr. Carter and I did. But... We did tend to do our studies in groups. So and is then, it now a rule rule or it's a rule? I think we may need to make it a rule rule again. Because I like let's there's build, let's don't... build a buddy system so no one says, I thought you were supposed to be reading books with her. Books, am I right? Uh, Evelyn, quite. do you mind me drinking in the corner while you're reading? It's not my favorite thing, but I understand the necessity. So Evelyn and I are paired up. Who else is reading? <laughs> Well, right now I'm exclusively translating at the university. So you're reading? Yeah, but I'm accompanied and I'm not actively reading. But I understand your point. It's close enough. But I'm surrounded by people. Well, if you don't need anybody, that's okay with me. I mean, at some point, I'll I'll be free to come back and do my own reading. I'll be assistance then. But you right need now. a buddy, even if you don't use them when you're at the library. So like that, when we turn around or something happens, we know that you, we don't ask ourselves who's, I'm not going to say responsible for you, but who's watching your back. I'll, uh, next time I go to the, the library, I'll ask to have someone with me. I had a thought. It's unrelated, but since everybody's here, I thought I'd share it. Uh, I know you're not supposed to go back to the place where you committed a crime. But we did know the name of the cult leader that was stopped 
at the pyramid. Would it have been a good idea to go check up on his old spot? See if we can find any clues about what the cult is about or what he's doing? Because they probably succeeded at summoning whatever they were summoning. It just went really bad for them. But that thing might be roaming around still. And we we don't know exactly what the fuck they were doing. So I know that we should not... Order. That is not a stupid plan. That is I a know very not, wise thing. I know we're not supposed to go there, but I think we might need to. Before we leave. As much as I dislike it, I think it's right. They might have contact information for someone in Kenya. Also. All right, so let's go crime then. The the antiquarian uh, that had his shop destroyed by the cult gave us the name and information on that guy. Maybe we should we could look that up and see if we could snoop around. Yep, uh, his uh, Omar Al Shakti. He's a actually very well known uh, plantation owner in the area. It's not difficult at all to find information on him. It's probably going to be difficult to snoop around, but maybe if they're having an estate sale. Hi guys, I heard you were a call. <laughs> Hi, fellow cultist. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> it, it came to my information that something terrible might have happened to Mr. Omar. I have come to inquire. <laughs> because it would be a shame. <laughs> Alright, uh, so who else is going to Omar's place? That depends on if Evelyn is reading more books or not. Totally. Because if she's reading books, I'm her buddy and I'm staying with her. Does that guy know anybody of us? Uh, he's dead. By face. Yeah, he's, that guy is dead. he's quite dead. Uh, Miles and Eugene put some bullets into him. That's why I was talking about not going back to the scene of your crime. Like, we kill that guy. Well, have they seen your face while you were doing the killing? Uh, he, he did look at me in the face. Other people. All the people who saw me over there were in the ritual, and I saw pieces of them about strewn around everywhere. So, uh, no, thanks. Probably not. I don't Simple think there's... answers. Sorry. I'm, I'm worried about people not staying dead and stuff like that. That's why I try to be precise. Oh, yeah. That's a possibility. Wouldn't that be uh, something? Uh, I think if we want to go snoop around, maybe uh, sorry, uh, maybe Alvin and Gary should spearhead that one. I am not what one would say as um discreet. But no, I but maybe can... you can talk to the people over there. Try to convince them to spill the beans or something. Oh yeah, I'm kind of verbose. And the the snooping around and finding clues and doing the detective work is more of Alvin's thing. 
Miles is more into uh, keeping us safe. Part. So, yeah, that's my two cents. Can you guys hear me? Yep. Works for me. Sorry, I was having some issue with my Discord. I couldn't talk. Um, if Evelyn is willing not to read books tonight, I can go take a look. I suggest I um, shower and rest anyway. I think that would be for the best, yes. I'm not keen on being here alone. Uh, unless, is Mr. Franklin staying behind or is Mr. Franklin going with you? I can stay here. Should I buy a gun? You can take mine. I shouldn't need it here. Yeah, but who knows? Maybe those books will attack you again. I don't if plan Miles to. Miles is with her. He's packed. And I'm quite certain he's a better shot than I am. So here I go. I'm going to take your revolver, ma'am. Here you go. She'll pass over her gun. Uh, I I'm there. I'm just trying to fix an internet problem. Uh, I'll be more active in a few minutes. Okay. okay. Sorry about that. Alvin visibly looks relieved when she passes Gary her gun. <laughs> Not because she doesn't have it, but because she can account for it over the last three days. <laughs> There's proof that it didn't go with me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, so who else is going to Omar's place? Out. I can come assist. We're just fixing uh, internet, so... Okay. Uh, Alvin, Eugene, and Gary are going. Evelyn and Miles are staying behind. All right. Oh, and I guess an important question uh, for uh, for Miles. Uh, are you continuing your, uh, your appointments with your therapist during this downtime? Downtime. Yep. Okay, perfect. Do you go into details about the weird shit you saw in the in the dreamlands, or do you just kind of play it close to the chest? I play it close to the chest and say that it could be strange, weird nightmares or dreams that I might have had. Okay. Perfect. Um, so during your time with uh, with the therapist, um, they don't seem they're they're very professional. They don't uh, they don't question anything that you might tell them um but you do have the feeling that they're they're not entirely in the know in the know but nothing that you say even if something accidentally slips or you know if you approach something you think obliquely but you're a little bit too on the nose they don't they don't respond the way you would expect like a normal everyday therapist type person like this particular therapist knows enough to not be shocked by anything you might say, tell them. Or he's jaded enough. Or jaded enough. Or professional enough. Not mutually exclusive. Uh, but just the uh, the idea of having somebody that uh, that you can that you can talk to. Uh, that is uh, 
you know, not one of your, not one of your fellow investigators, somebody that, you know, you can kind of like be a little bit perhaps more open with that is comforting in a way. Uh, and you can give me a, uh, a sanity roll. What does the therapist think about Kenya? Does he want to take a trip? Uh, it doesn't actually help you regain any or gain any sanity, but it, it is a process. And I mean, you essentially hired them as your personal therapist. If you want to continue that while you travel, you can certainly make those arrangements. Sure. You have your own personal alienist. It's a status it's a symbol. Status symbol. Aliens. It's, it's aliens. Uh, no, I don't think there's any Mego in this particular adventure. Uh, all right. Uh, the journey to Omar's place. Uh, Omar Al Shakti. Did, did someone just say aliens while we're in Egypt with missing pyramids? Yes. All right. So wait, is this guy willing to travel with us? Or no, he's just going to be like on call for me here. No, he's he's willing to travel with you. He understands that you have some issues. And like I said, he seems to he seems to be a little bit more in tune with what you might be going through. So it's going to be a spare character if somebody dies. Sure. The possibility of a backup character if somebody dies, but also uh, you guys have easier access to uh to therapy should you need it uh but yes his um his his training at the at the mosque they've dealt with i mean the they were guarding ancient artifacts there they know something um but omar al shakti not hard to find the plantation at all uh it is outside of town easily like hire a car or take a cab um it is deserted when you guys arrive there's no workers in the fields there's nobody there's no like there's no lights on it looks completely deserted chris quick yep. question Yep. Um, this is a plantation. It is. Plant plantation like farms require regular maintenance. Yep. Relatively easy to say how long it's people have not been tending to it. Are we talking about a month or is it like two or three days? Um, at this point in time, it's been maybe a week and a bit, a little bit more. Roughly coincides with when all the shit went down at the pyramid. I was going to say it coincides with the event, as I will call it. Yes. That means that there's also no one to stop us. So we could look like we're walking right up to the door of the residence and there's nobody. Yeah, it's outside of it's outside of Cairo city limits. There's no police. There's no like private security. Like it, it looks like abandoned almost. Like the nouveau rich, the nouveau abandoned. That's right. That is hilarious. Uh, but with nobody to stop you, it is it is quite easy to to take a look around, enter into the into the house. Like, there's no sign of habitation. Brb. Yep. Chris, I go poking around if I. Uh, are the doors open or locked? Like, how easy is it to get into here? Uh, the doors are locked, uh, but you're not pressed for time, so it's easy enough to get in. Um, taking a quick look around, uh, you do find, um, basically, there's a lot of, like, kind of, like, Egyptian decor and all of this sort of things. The, the sort of thing you would expect to find in, like, a well-to-do person, like, business person's house. Um, Chris? But, yep. None of the cult stuff has ever been obvious. It's been under like a trap door or shit like that. So. Yep. Uh, you do find, however, um, 
There is a still ticking brass mounted clock hanging on one wall. Uh, this looks exactly like the one that you found in New York. Uh, and it's this set... is the uh... go ahead. Yeah, and it is also set to uh, to Greenwich Mean Time. Fascinating. Um, take a look around. You do find there's a there's a framed photograph of him, um, like several pictures of him, like you know, on the mantle sort of thing. Different like business meetings, shaking hands with people. Uh, there is one picture that catches your attention where he is with an absolutely striking young woman that you have met in London. She was the Spices girl. She was. Uh, and... Is that on purpose that the Spice girl is in London? Maybe. Uh, she's kind of posh. Ooh. Uh, yeah. Uh, and, uh, you also find a safe that is locked. Uh, but looking around, you don't find any, I mean, you guys have all the time in the world. You don't find any, um, hidden compartments, secret stairwells, secret doors in the walls or anything of that nature. I'm going to push that roll to okay. open the safe. Okay. Uh, how much luck do I have? If I push a roll, does it still count as giving me XP next chapter? Uh, yes. I have 85. What are the odds that I'm going to roll another over 90? Well, now that you've said it. Correct answer is 15% um yeah i'm gonna push it uh on uh with the downside being obviously i break the locking mechanism and then we can't get in there anymore. no yep. one can get in there anymore i guess Ooh. for right. those of you who are watching at home i rolled an 83 on my 85 on my second all right <laughs> Woo. I mean, you could have cut it slightly closer, but just slightly. <laughs> uh, inside the safe, there is uh, there's like 250 Egyptian pounds. Uh, there is a business logbook that shows like five years worth of shipments. Uh, uh, all Egyptian artifacts uh, being sent to either Hofeng Import Export in Shanghai or Randolph Shipping Company in Darwin, Australia. Uh, you also find a business card for Edward Gavigan from London. Uh, and an initialed receipt. Um, by Evelyn. Not by Evelyn. By uh, Aubrey Aubrey Penhu. I take that. I'm still looking doubly hard for cult things in this house. Gary, you gonna are you with me here? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I can try to spot hidden things. Yep. Um, you guys have, like I said, all the time in the world to thoroughly search this place. There's nothing. If he kept any any cult stuff here, he took it with him to the grand ritual. There's uh, an outhouse, or or the probably an outhouse, but there's no like pool house or anything like that, right? Uh, no, there's not. There's like a servants' quarters, um, but nothing here. Like there's things that tie him to goings on, but nothing directly cultish. Was he devout enough so he doesn't have anything to drink in his home? Oh no, he does have some like very high end uh like uh liquors and, and wines. I kind of freaking helping myself. Okay. So we spend a good half day here and no one comes up to the door, no one comes tilling the field as if like nothing? Nope. As if they're all dead. So everyone working for this man 
common laborers included were cultists? It's a fair assumption. So probably probably more concerning is like during the time you guys are here, like there's no sign of like like a police investigation, like, oh my god, this important businessman has gone missing. Um, like there's there's no signs that anybody's been here. Huh. Is there an implication there? Does that mean the police people have died as well? Or that his death was expected and no one's looking into it who's still around? Could be could be either, could be both. Gary, is there anything else you're looking for? Honestly, I'm trying to find anything that would be helpful for the for the um, for a trip as in valuable something that we can uh, uh petty cash that we can have on hand um that's very interesting because there is nothing here that points to kenya uh, australia Lin london china yep nothing here points to kenya I'm back. Uh, and yeah, Gary, there's there's plenty of things that you could, you know, sell for quick cash. There's like 250 uh, Egyptian pounds and like just cash in the safe. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm trying to. I'm I'm making a scoundrel of myself. OK, we just we just got in. Sorry, I, I missed the last few minutes. No worries. Basically, they searched the house. They didn't find anything other than some things that tied Omar to uh, other things you're aware of. Tying him to Gavigan, tying him to Zahara, uh, tying him to Ho Fang Imports and um, Randolph Shipping in Australia. Is there anything about the ritual they made? There is nothing related to the cult here. Okay. Hmm. Well, all of the other cult and like places they gathered, so Yep. Uh and Eugene with your with your background you're confident that anything that he had related to the cult or to the ritual would have been with him during the ritual. Oh yeah. That's that's fair. So all over the desert. Yep. The only thing cultish here, cult ish here, is the clock. Yes, there is another one of those clocks like you found in uh, in New York. Uh, did you... Is it untempered so far? Yep. Uh, I say we take it so we are on the same time as they are. That is we, quite a good idea. So we know their timeline? How big is this? Uh, it's a like a wall-mounted clock, so it's, I mean, it's a 1920s wall-mounted clock, so it's probably a good, like, 18, 19, just, yeah, about 10 pounds. Like, it's a, it's a very solid marine cr chronometer. Sorry, uh, ex-watchmaker here. Oh, there you go. Don't know anything about watches or clocks, but moving this won't jostle the time or anything? Oh, it undoubtedly will. So, yeah, let's get ready. I mean, this is a countdown. If we get to the last day, we're screwed anyway. Do we really need it? I mean, if it's... That's not a crazy idea if they all are kind of on the same time frame. There was an idea of changing the time by like 27 minutes or five minutes or seven minutes or something like that. Just enough that it would screw up if someone came by and tried to do the ritual using this clock, assuming that it was correct.
But if you don't want to, uh, if you don't want to take it with us, I mean that's okay too. Because we can change this by seven minutes. No one's really going to notice anything. If someone tries to use it to do the ritual in the future while we're not here and they use this time, it'll fail anyway. I'm going to go with the, with the, the, I'm going to go with the majority here too. Okay. In the meantime, our miles are Evelyn up to anything. Um. Evelyn plans to take a bath and sleep. She is, unless she is compelled to do so, she is not going to read the book with only Miles somewhere in the hotel. Okay. Uh, is Miles doing anything or just kind of keeping an eye on Evelyn? I'm just going to keep an eye on Evelyn. Uh, yes, there there is no compulsion to read the books or anything, Evelyn. Your uh, your grasp on sanity remains tenuous, but in <laughs> remains. That's good. I mean, you picked up a there. There's knowledge of a few more spells now that you've read another book, but all right. Did I get new spells and didn't notice? Maybe. I don't know. It's hard to say. You're insane. This is not going to oh. be one of those. It's not gonna There's be one, one those. I don't recognize. This is not going to be one of those. Let me try this. It's not technically Ooh. reading a book, so I'm not breaking a rule. I, I think there's three here that I don't recognize, actually. All right. Where did I get there? <laughs> <laughs> Periodically, everyone is just kind of like chanting under her breath. <laughs> probably shouldn't that would be a bad idea <laughs> this is fine everything that's is how fine. we that's how we ended up in the plateau all right uh unless there's anything pressing uh we'll just kind of skip forward the next uh the next little bit of time while you guys wait for your proper time to do your ritual I mean, during this time, you guys are going about doing your doing your training, you know, studying, reading, translating, all of that sort of stuff during this time. Uh, for Gary, uh, Ramsey will telegraph you back and say that he will make arrangements to have uh, your friends um, uh, extradited back to America, where they'll be placed in the care of doctors at Arkham Asylum. I give that information to my compatriot. I hear Arkham Asylum has a great reputation. It's literally the only sanatorium I've ever heard of in the state. We've been to Arkham. You have. You've been to Arkham Town, not the asylum, but... Oh, yeah. Lovely little place. Known for its asylum. Its first-rate, world-class asylum. And its university. Good old... Arkham University? Or is that where Miskatonic is? It's where Miskatonic is. Right. Sounds like a great place to open the door to the dreamland to bring my friend back. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, there's, a, there's a haunted house on the top of the hill that leads directly into the dreamlands. So uh, that's perfect. All right. Uh, so time passes. You guys go about your, uh, your business uh, until the day of the ritual comes. Um, Dr. Kador's people will gather together. Uh, there's a there's about 20 of them uh, and they uh, they are willing participants do we have a virgin uh, uh, it's not a virgin it's the blood of somebody who didn't know about uh, an innocent sorry there you go <laughs> we had some last time 
I assume it's not going to be fresh enough and we need to find some more. Yep, you need uh, somebody who does not have any points at all in Cthulhu Mythos. I don't. <laughs> all right, so new goal. Don't let Gary learn about anything because we need his blood later on. I mean, it used to be Alvin, but I mean, yeah, he's been strong for a while. Blood. Can also find blood elsewhere. It's not that hard. I mean, yes, but I get it. it's not easier quite the Cecily. Alvin was uh, an innocent like me until he took mythos to the knee. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think he, he took a nithocris to the face. Yeah. Uh, that's that's the thing that that gave him his first mythos point. Wasn't it the the um, pharaoh, the dark pharaoh? I think uh, that, that might be. I think it was. All right. So the casting of the ritual. You guys all gather yeah. all gather at the pyramid. Mm -hmm. um, you you basically work the surface, work the symbol into the. It's got to be into a hard natural substance such as granite, and then fixed to a high place. So you create the eye in the afternoon before the moon rises. At the moonrise, then you start filling the eye with blood once per hour until dawn. And who is actually performing the ritual? Pretty sure that was Evelyn. Wasn't it the uh, person who did the spell to make it easier? Yeah, I, I prepared a spell to Maybe? cast it easier if you want me to try. Sure. Uh, the point was I... two people there, so if we fucked up, the other could jump in. <laughs> right. I've only got so... 30 power, so if you have more than that, feel free. I do have more than that. <laughs> yeah, I imagine everyone does. <laughs> the the best the best thing about Eugene is power and size for some reason. <laughs> All right. Uh, so as uh, as you start gathering, is is anybody not participating in the ritual? What knowledge do I mean, you have to participate? Because I don't know if Gary, myself, or Miles. Uh, you just have to basically stand, stand in the circle, holding hands, chanting. It might be interesting to have some people to defend us in case somebody uh, try to interrupt us. And anyone who does not participate will have less of a toll taken on their on themselves. Because we'll need to do that ritual again, so possibly in the future we'll have less help. So sparing yourself is not a terrible idea, but I'll let you decide. How much power do we need to give in total? Uh, in total, it's uh, assuming nothing gets screwed up, it's around 100. And, and we have we're... 20 participants. Yeah. Plus can we... us. Can we sacrifice the participants that are not us? It's going to be taken equally from everyone. But yep. if somebody in the group does not participate and stand guard, make sure we're not interpreted, they'll, they'll be spared that cost. Miles, do you want to stand guard with me? Whoa. Okay. Uh, anybody else standing guard? There nah, I'm someplace. giving blood. Okay. There might be some place where we are forced to do the ritual with just the five of us. So think about that. <laughs> Right. Um, so as Eugene starts the starts the ritual, as the as the new moon uh, starts to rise, you start to collect Gary's blood in the in the ritual. 
uh, in the uh, in the eye. Uh, he starts chanting and chanting. Um, because you've successfully cast Vorish Sign, you don't have to roll for it. It happens automatically. So you have two choices. You can reduce the power cost of the spell, or you can make the roll to cast it easier. With the Vorish Sign? Yep. You can reduce the cost, or make your attempt to cast the Eye of Light and Darkness easier. Can uh, he quantify those values, or is it abstract until he rolls? It's abstract till he decides. Um, hmm. And to successfully cast it is a power roll? Uh, to successfully cast it, it is a hard power roll. A hard Okay, I'll, I'll make it easier. Okay. That seems like a good choice. Right. If it would have been a roll, I might have tempted fate, but on a hard power roll, no. No, I'm not going to right. <laughs> Um So, yeah, so you, you start the chant. Uh, everybody starts to feel this, like, power rising like the the hairs on the back of your neck stand up the the hairs on your arms start to stand up there's like this like powerful tingle in the air you look over and like eugene's hair is actually like floating off of his head sort of thing uh the sky seems to darken even though it was already dark uh the the stars in the sky seem to kind of blink out uh and i'm gonna get eugene you can give me a hard power roll but with a bonus die Okay. Power. Hard. Bonus die. All right. Um, so yeah, so as the power rises and rises, and you can feel like uh, it's like electricity coursing through your body as it kind of like with every every hour that passes more and more of your of your life force kind of gets pulled from you i do some now uh... uh and uh everybody permanently loses four power Everybody? Everybody who took part. I think we all have to take part, don't we? You don't have to. Uh, Miles is standing guard just in case something goes wrong. Like I said, if anybody wants to stand guard or stand off, it's possible that some sometime in the future we'll have to do this ritual with only us. Yeah. If you want to save your power. Evelyn will wait then. And pay a lot of attention to make sure that <laughs> when she when she eventually has to do it, that she's getting it right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it still works out to four power each, so that's not going to affect anything. And you did calculate it's Alvin and Miles recording, right? Yep. Okay. It's because the the power is basically it's like you know. One from this person, one from this person, one from this person. It kind of goes around the circle. Or I guess, you know, five from this person so until, but yeah. It, it works out that uh, it's not as draining as you had feared. Everybody gives up a little bit of their life force. And if it wasn't for the fact that you have all of these people with you, um, like it doesn't it doesn't seem like like you feel like this is going to suck all of the life out of you uh over the course of the time until like it just kind of reaches that kind of breaking point and then you like all kind of collectively take a deep breath and hold on to what remains of your soul thank you for the vivid description chris that did not sound evil at all I mean, we're doing magic in a Cthulhu game. It's going to sound terrible. 
Um, and when it's done, the, uh, the, 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 the folks that helped you, uh, Dr. Kador's people, um, they, like, they look drained. They look a little bit drawn, uh, as do the rest of you who took part. You know, your cheeks are a little bit sunken and stuff. Uh, but at the same time, there's this feeling of, like, kind of very quiet elation. Um, pride? Yeah, pride almost, like... Um, you everybody... managed to do something. Yeah, actually, everybody can give me a, a psychology role. High five, Gary. We both rolled eighty nine. Hey. I cannot let you to be the only yeah. one who fails. I need a psychology role from um, Evelyn. Sorry. Ah, oh, well, here's something. Uh, so Evelyn and Eugene, um, I mean, there's a, there's a sense amongst all of you, like, okay, we've done something like, like, and not just a little thing, not just like, you know, stopping a cult or whatever. Like you, you feel like you've taken a, um, monumental step forward. Um, but with these, uh, these folks that are helping you, these, uh, these various people from the university, these, uh, these various people from the museum, these people that work for Dr. Kadur, um, for Evelyn and Eugene. Um, there's a sense amongst them that they have, they have basically lived their entire life for this moment. Uh, and with, uh, Eugene, with your heart success, um, it's possible that they've basically been waiting for this sort of thing for, for generations. So the reverse call thing was might not have been that far. The reverse <laughs> the reverse cult idea was not far off. Uh, I'll try to chit chat with the people after the ritual is done. Thank them for their help. Just try to, to get a feel of their, like, this is the feeling I got from just watching them. But we'll just invite them to, to dinner. We'll have a giant feast as a success. Oh, honestly, that's definitely something we could, we should do. We have booze. They, they we do don't. Drink. We cannot drink yet. <laughs> We're not in yeah. Kenya yet. Yeah. Uh, but yes, they will, they will absolutely uh, take you up on... Uh, on the offer of a food celebratory dance. dinner. Food, dance, and song. Food, dance, and song. We uh, need the, the upbeatness a bit. A bit. Uh, but and yes. just, just try to feel up, like, try to go deeper in that feeling I got that they were preparing for this. Okay. I checked. Uh, and yeah, you guys can basically spend spend the evening, you know, kind of celebrating your victory, uh, realizing that, I mean, the, despite the hardships that may have caused, uh, had uh, Evelyn's you know, creature not whisk you away, uh, you know, you would have been there when whatever happened at the at the pyramid happened. Um, so you feel kind of buoyed by your success so far uh everybody everybody is still alive nobody is insane the few people that were something somewhere managed to uh to alleviate that problem chris i hate this game because this is actually a good moment and all i can think of is what terrible thing is going to happen to destroy this yep <laughs> Uh, but everybody, everybody gains four sanity for your uh, victories here in Egypt. 
Oh. Does anyone else have sanity? Anyone else heart stop when he rolled dice while I was saying that? Yeah. I mean, usually. <laughs> it's uh it's never reassuring. Uh, and then a day or two later, you guys can make your way to the uh, travel arrangements that Gary has arranged to uh, catch your boat to Mombasa. Did we manage to make sure a friend were on their way to uh, America? Yes, uh, Gary took care of that, uh, and um, uh, Ramsey has made arrangements for them to be extradited to America and placed in the care of Arkham Asylum. Great. So we have two weeks of boat. Uh, yes, you guys have two weeks of boating. Uh, it is not enough time to train a skill, unfortunately. Um, but it is enough time to get some rest and relaxation. Uh, Miles, you can give me another sanity roll since you have your, uh, your private therapist with you. Is that enough time to read a book while under supervision? <laughs> uh, depends on what book you're reading. Yeah, the one I just translated uh, is going to take too long to read, so I'm not going to read that. I'm going to go for something lighter. Okay. Well, there is a, if you speak French, there's the Selection de Livre Divan. Some John Grisham, maybe some Colleen. You know what? Maybe some oh. DV Day. Actually, <laughs> let's see. Uh, Africa's Dark Secrets, you can read in about a week. Uh, Amongst the Stones is a week. Uh, Book of Dizan is two weeks. Uh, Equinox DVZ is two weeks. If you speak Latin, there's the Liber Avanus. Ooh, that's like a month. The the Liber Avanus. Yep, that's like a month. Okay, so not that one. Uh. Uh, Song of the Jinn is 12 days. So basically you've got Song of the Jinn, uh, the Book of Dizan, uh, Amongst the Stones, Africa's Dark Secrets. Uh, I think, um, uh, from what book did you read about the Dimension Shambler? Uh... Oh, I don't remember. You no don't idea. make her read anything. <laughs> I'm gonna read. How the, could you the, forget? I'm gonna check the. I'm gonna read the song of the gin, and I'm gonna try to just peruse the book to try to find from where she got that. <laughs> because I've read six of them now. I know. I know she only read the English one. So I'm gonna yes. check. Yes, it's in one of the English her. ones. <laughs> yeah, uh, the I'm trying to find. It is the uh, the, the book of Dizan has uh, dimensional shambler. Alvin is just yeah, I'm sure she, why she people don't read the table of contents before they read the books. But she she'd there. probably she would probably have notes somewhere about which book it came from, but Anita doesn't because Chris doesn't usually tell me. I just happened to notice two books later that I've got extra spells on my sheet and I'm like, oh, what does this do? So yeah. So I'm going to read the Song of the Jinn and uh, check on the Book of Dyson. Right.
What is your Arabic? Technically, I'm supposed to be fluent in Arabic, but... Okay. As it was my mother tongues. Ah, gotcha. Okay. Don't go in over old enough. Uh oh. Only three sanity points, not even enough to go insane. Uh, but uh, in the book, uh, so it is a, it is a heretical work. Uh, let's read the transcript of the series of discussions held by the author, a man named Galib El Sabah, with a jinn, which relates on manner of esoteric and forbidden lore. There's actually very, very little about the mythos in it. Okay. Um, but it does reference uh, a being called Kathuga, uh, which seems to be some sort of like powerful, powerful jinn or powerful Efreet, uh, and its servants, which are referred to as fire vampires. Uh, and there are details on the summoning of them. Hmm. Uh, basically, in order to do so, you need to have. Uh, it takes about six hours, and you need to have a uh, an iron replica of a torch. But it's said that the flames that are generated by these things can melt anything. That might actually be useful. spell called enchantment of the living flame which does not sound ominous at all uh, absolutely not <laughs> fire vampire seriously i mean it says they can't burn through anything regular vampires weren't good enough like that's right it's not as bad as a star vampire So that took of that course. took my whole trip, I assume. That did take you the whole trip. Good. Uh, you and... never determine who was your buddy, though. I assume people were skipping who was watching over me. <laughs> yep. Um. So yeah, you guys would have would have made sure that somebody's watching. That's the rule. Huh. There is a mention in this spell that seems very specific. There is. If only you had learned this earlier. Yep, yep. Only if I learned that just before. Okay. <laughs> uh, but I mean, if we can and find you want again, to share with the class? Uh, the last line of the spell is, As the flame of the torch are drawn from Shituga, they can melt down metal objects as well as those imbued with magic, such as the crown of Nithocris, without the need to summon fire vampire. Like it specifically mentioned the the, the crown of Nithocris. Yep. Um, but after two weeks, you guys disembark in Mombasa. Uh, Mombasa, it's a it's a busy city. It's about thirty thousand people. It is right on the edge of the Indian Ocean. Um. There is a little cor coral island built offshore for defensive purposes. Um, there are foot traffic ferries that connect the island. Uh, there's also a railway. Um, Miles, you're very familiar with uh, Mombasa. You're from Kenya, so you, you have been here many, many times. Um, Mombasa, it is, uh, it is a British colony at this point in time, and it is heavily, heavily segregated. Um, there is a there's a very clear distinction between uh, the the 
the, the whites and the non-whites. And uh, it is having having come from Cairo, which is a little bit more metropolitan. It's a little bit strange. Uh, but I will get everybody to give me spot hidden rolls. Those are nice shoes. You and your damn shoes. Remind, remind me the time of that bar mitzvah of yours. Gentlemen, don't I kiss said, and tell. I mean, I think I saw At those a bar shoes mitzvah? <laughs> as long I... as it's not your bar mitzvah. Yeah, mine was kind of something. Um, so, uh, Miles and Evelyn and Alvin. Alvin. Uh, you all notice that you are, you are definitely being watched. Um, uh, there is no, there is no um, customs here in, in Mombasa. Uh, it's literally like grab your luggage off the boat. There's no need to check in. There's no searching of luggage. Um, it, it's very kind of loosey goosey. Um, but you guys notice that you are specifically being watched. Is it somebody I recognize from times I've been in this city? Uh, the person watching you is not it is not somebody that you recognize however uh as you kind of like are looking at the crowd trying not to like take do like direct eyes on the guy that you know is watching you and kind of scan in the crowd you do spot somebody that you recognize uh he is uh he is a big game hunter named colonel endicott Specifically, uh, Colonel Henry Endicott. He is a, a very loud man who generally uh, smells like cigars and whiskey. Like, if you think, like, you know, you're like... Hemingway? Like, early 60s big game hunter. Like, Hemingway is probably a pretty good guess. Yeah. Uh, but yes, uh, Miles, you do spot him in the crowd. Is he trying to be subtle about it? Uh, he does not seem to have spotted you at all. He seems to be like looking for other people uh, or, you know, other business. But the, uh, the person that you've spotted who is spying on you uh, is a young um, uh, Indian man, probably, probably in his early 20s. Well, that didn't take long. Someone's already uh, showing an interest in us. I say that to whoever's next, very quietly and subtly. Should we do something about it? Well, we lead them to wherever we're going to be. Our first hotel is going to be, so they think that we're there, and then somewhere we change. Yeah, there's someone else I act. Sorry, and you said Endicott seems to be looking for somebody? Yep, he's got that kind of look on his face, like, you know, kind of standing up a little bit taller so he can see over the crowds. Uh, and then as you watch him, he kind of starts to, like, become, like, a little bit deflated. Like, a little bit, like, maybe he didn't find the person he's looking for. Should we just grab the guy who's looking for us and ask him a question, or...? Is that too forward? Misdirection fresh questions after. So there is somebody uh, I recognize. I don't know if he's on the lookout for us and if he's just not as perceptive as he normally is. 
want to have a chat with your friend? Well, we're I'm going rather on. indifferent towards seeing him, but I wouldn't say he's a friend. I just know him from certain circles, at least casually, who he is. I mean, it's always practical to have just information from someone who has boots on the ground could you us know what's happening. In any way, I think Mombasa is not our real target. We'll need to go deeper in land for our investigation. So we could just have a little chat with him to know what's if anything of interest has happened around here that we should know about. Or we could just be lined for the hotel, as you please. No, I, I defer. I don't know if he's looking for us or someone else. I think having more contacts and less is a good idea. Mm -hmm. I Let's, can go strike yeah. up a conversation with him then. Okay. Um, so yeah, so as you as you approach him and he kind of catches your attention, you know, he kind of like, you know, kind of like quickly, you know, kind of like moves, to, you know, straightens up his clothing and stuff like that. As you get close to him, you can see like, you know, his... You know, his his shirt is a little bit threadbare. You know, his his tie is a little bit, you know, faded. Uh, definitely, uh, definitely somebody who's putting on the pretension of being well to do, but not able to maintain the standard. It's like, oh, ha, uh, Miles. Yes, lovely to see you again, Colonel Endicott. It's been too long. Oh, it has. It has. Oh. What brings you to Mombasa? Last I heard, you had uh, decided to seek your fortune elsewhere. Oh, I've been in Nairobi for quite some time now. However, business took me abroad, and now I'm slowly making my way back home. Oh. See, have you come to uh, have you come to Safari? Do you have uh, people from abroad interested in seeing our fine game? I do. I do have some colleagues who are interested in adventure and and experiencing new things. Yes, I don't know if uh, I've convinced them to do a safari yet, but it's certainly on the to do list. Well, it, uh, it just so happens that uh, people who had uh, book time with me have apparently not, uh, not managed to make it on this uh, particular ship. Uh, so I do have openings uh, if you would like to come to the estate. Uh, we're not far from Nairobi if that's where you're headed. We no, you haven't been there before. We are uh, just southwest of Nairobi. Um, can I do a psychology or something to see if I think he's lying? I uh, certainly can. Yeah, my luck's hurting. I'm not going to spend. Okay. Um, you are aware that he does have a uh, he does have a, a small estate and a, like a hunting lodge uh, just outside Nairobi. Uh, but um, well, perhaps we can discuss. Are you are you traveling to Nairobi soon? I'll be I'll be taking the the train tomorrow. I believe our schedule is flexible. I could go ask the if if the others wish to uh, go tomorrow with you. Oh, well, certainly. Um, we uh, I, I've been tracking some uh, some interesting games, some lions and the like. Um, I mean, your your guests would not be in any danger. I have a, a lovely viewport that we can uh, shoot the beasts from. 
Aha. Sorry, I'm back. But yes, if your friends are interested, I will certainly, uh, I, w I would love to have the company. Oh, it would be lovely to catch up. I, sh I will go ask them. Well, thank you. Thank you. All right, so I go back. Um, so he claims that he is here for, for business that is not going to happen because the people that hired him to do a safari on his estate near Nairobi have apparently not shown up. So if we want, we can go on the train with him tomorrow and go and you can get to know him better and we could possibly do a safari if that interests any of you. Would that bring us closer to our target? We don't know exactly for certainty where this mountain is. I've had theories, but I, uh, we don't have hard and fast evidence as to do where think, exactly it is. Do you think he can help us find that? Mm, that would require further digging into uh, what he really knows about what's going on in the world. And whether he knows about any legends involving this mountain, whether or not those legends are tied to some kind of tribal mythology or some such from a tribe here. I mean, we, we need to go to Nairobi to ask questions to the people who were in contact with the expedition, and we try to find this mountain. So we could travel with him, question him, see if maybe he could guide us to the mountain of the Black Wind. I mean, he's already more of an expert than I am. I just, Miles, do you think he can help us or not? You know him a little bit more. Is he more of a local? Is, would he be able to help? I know him as a big game hunter who also has a big enough estate that he, he sells his services as a big game hunter and guide for profit. He's the kind of person who probably tries to get higher than his station. I have never had, you know, any kind of dealings with him where we would discuss things not of this world over brandies or sherry, shall we say. I feel like he's been a bit down of his luck recently. From just feeling of looking at him. And he really wanted those clients to help him get back on track. It's certainly possible. It's just a feeling. All I hear is estate and guards, which might help us with our watcher problem. Yes. And all I hear is cherry and brandy. <laughs> <laughs> we have indeed reached an undry country, mister. We call it civilized. It's a way to put it. Should I be British? <laughs> Suddenly daring. Miles, tell your friend we're interested, but we want to figure out the specifics if he can suggest a place where we can have dinner together. Well, he said the train is leaving tomorrow, so we have some time. So I will go back to the colonel, and I would say, Colonel, I believe you have some uh, guests, if you would care to possibly join us for dinner. I haven't been here in a while. If you have a place to recommend, uh, I'm sure that uh, we can have a lovely dinner on me. Uh, certainly. Um, if you need a, a place to stall, the Manor Hotel is certainly uh, sufficient. Uh, if you're looking for something more upscale, I'm not sure what your tastes nor budget run. Uh, there's the Castle Hotel. It is the premier hotel in Mombasa. Uh, I myself, I prefer the Manor. It is a, a little bit less pretentious. Uh, both of them have excellent restaurants. I'm just going to go and wave my party to join us so I'm not running back and forth as a messenger. Okay. 
Yeah, as soon as he's comfortable enough for us to join you, we'll do that. I would not be uh, so arrogant as to figure out, try to determine the, the tastes of, of the rest of my party. I look right at his friend and say, um, which one serves hamburgers? I'm sure the Manor Hotel would do. Yeah, we don't need to go too upscale, but we will need to go to lose our new friend, though. Not talking about you, Colonel, but I think somebody is has spotted us, maybe to try to steal our luggage or something. And I'd pretty I'd pretty much like to lose him. Well, I'm not as uh, young as I once was, nor as spry, but uh, I will meet you at the Manor Hotel if you do what you feel is necessary. Manor Hotel sounds like a great destination. Uh, and then he'll start to, to leave. He does have like a little bit, uh, basically he's walking a little bit taller. He's got a little bit more of a bounce in his step. So Chris, is Colonel just like an affectionate nickname that people give him or does he actually ex-military? He is actually ex-military. Um, Chris? Yes. Would I recognize a uh... A gambler that's down on his luck. Um, you can give me a psychology roll. Chris Colonel's above major, right? Uh, yep. Yes, yes, it yes. Is. yes, it is. Colonel is not a small rank. Colonel is not a small rank. Uh, Gary, you don't necessarily know if he's a gambler, but you do you do recognize that desperation. I've seen people like that. You've seen it in the mirror a few times. That was rude, but it's also a fact. Just... I know desperation when I see it, so let us be wary. I mean, if he's desperate, we can buy his loyalty. Just got to make sure nobody else does. A desperate man is like uh, a hole in a flask. You cannot empty it. You cannot. I mean. Yeah, I get it. Can never fill it. Quite enough. Chris, are we at that new hotel or are we on our way there? Because if we're on our way there, I want to do a spot hidden to see if we're being followed. Okay. Uh, well, you guys know you were spotted at the uh, at the docks. It's a question of whether you're trying to lose your tail or let them follow you. Uh, and incidentally, uh, Miles, you would know this. Uh, Colonel Hendicott actually has the Distinguished Service Order. Uh, and the and is a member of the Order of the Knights of the Bath, uh, which is basically like the fourth most senior officer in the British Orders of Chivalry. So, sorry, Bath is in like the city with the Roman baths. Uh, it is like you said, Order of the Knights of the is it Bath B A T H? Yeah, it is the most honorable order of the Bath B A T H. So he is, he's basically a, uh, a member of the knightly orders. So he is definitely a high ranking British citizen. Is there like a predecessor or something adjacent to like the Freemasons? Uh, no, this is like an actual like knightly order. They are, um, uh, He's noble. Yeah, he's he's lesser nobility. Uh, basically, okay, sure. basically, if it, if you don't address him as Colonel, you could call him Sir Endicott. Uh, 
Uh, it is awarded for service to the crown. M Miles, do you know if he's susceptible to flattery? <laughs> There's one way to find out. You can try. <laughs> I'm not trying to seduce time. I'm just trying to... <laughs> You know if your friend is single, friend. like... <laughs> I don't know if he has a friend. No, I don't. I'm sorry. Oh, dear. Such twisted minds. <laughs> Terrible. I'm not judging. What happens in Mombasa can stay in Mombasa. Glad to hear it. For somebody who's not judging, you are quick to jump to conclusions. You don't jump to conclusions in this case. You take a small step, and their conclusions are. One day I'll have my vengeance, and it's going to be terrible. While you're <laughs> doing that, though, let's ditch her tail. Yeah, please. All right. Uh, so somebody can give me a stealth roll. Oof! Damn! <laughs> there we go. Uh, yeah, Alvin, you're well used to losing tails at this point. <laughs> Damn! What I'm can gonna... Alvin do? Uh, uh listen. I, I can't listen for <laughs> Um, so yeah, so you can like you know um, make your way like through some of the the market stalls, through the you know the the very busy fish market, um, uh, out a out a like back alley sort of thing, and you do eventually lose the talent. It does seem like it actually takes you some effort to lose him. Like this is not just so he's some, skilled. He is he is skilled at trailing. Uh, but eventually, you do lose him. John, let's go to dinner. And Lee. Do you think it's it might be the cult already checking on us? Is there any other option? That's what I'm wor worried about. Did we crew on any other enemy beside the cult that I forget to think about? They would have to take a number. Yeah. The thing is, some of the cult, there was the cult, and then there was the the, the conspiracy, conspiracy around them. Like, in you talked to me about in London, about the, there was the cult, and then there was the, the secret... Uh, workshop with stuff coming from Australia in it. Like sometimes there's more than one organization in those things. That's what that's the kind of thing I fear. Like there's the cult and then there's whatever else shenanigans they're planning. I'm not an expert, but I assume that there's a cult and then there's a cult behind the cult and another cult next to the cult. Um, so yes, you guys can easily, with that roll, lose your tail, uh, make your way to the Manor Hotel. It is a, uh, it is a, a very nice hotel. It's not quite like super, super upscale, but definitely, definitely will, will suffice. Definitely better than anything that you had in Cairo. Uh, probably better than anything that I've had for a while, actually. We're going to need to check for secret passage in our room. That is a man who's speaking from experience. Yep. We're here one night. Yeah, but still going to check. If the cult is already on, on her tail, I don't want to have, like, night assassins. So we do guard duty? Would probably be First, we do dinner. 
Yeah, let's do dinner first. Uh, I see. So you guys can you guys can get rooms. You can you know put your stuff away. You know, wash the road dirt off. Make your way to dinner. Um, I mean, it is upscale enough that people do dress up for dinner. Uh oh. Can I go shopping for clothes? Uh, yes, you guys can easily like. You guys have the money. You can get the things that you need to uh, to look presentable. Can we look like we blend? As part of the presentable piece? Uh, for the most part, yeah. I mean, Eugene is wearing a fez, so let's see how much that blends. Yep. Uh, Eugene does actually draw a little bit of attention. Uh, more of the, like, you know, what is that sort doing in here sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, but. Uh, I thought that, though, like, what's... Uh, you know, once you start paying with money, then people stop questioning. <clears throat> yeah, people like me are not usually well dressed, so. Exactly. Um, but yes, um, Colonel Endicott, meet you. He he spends the evening kind of like regaling you with tales uh, of his time uh, with the British forces during the Boer War. Um, his. Uh, love for hunting talks about like the biggest uh, you know the biggest beasts that he has hunted uh you know lions and tigers and bears oh my i'm trying um i'm pretty sure he's telling the truth but uh at which level does he embellish it okay uh it's a psychology role. chris is he likable He's boisterous, but likable. I'm half decent at psychology. So. Uh, uh, Gary, he's he's for the most part he's telling the truth, but you can you can sense there is that there is that tinge of desperation, like he he's really trying to sell you guys on the thrill of hunting. Um, you know, really trying to make it sound like something that you need to do while you're here in Africa. Like if you haven't gone on a safari, then you don't know what you're missing. You haven't lived life until you've, you know, shot a, a ferocious beast. Uh, and then it kind of leads into a, you know, kind of a, a pitch on how, you know, he does have this, you know, this game lodge and he has space and he would love for you to come in and visit him since you're headed to Nairobi anyway. But it's all tinged with a sort of desperation. Uh, and the desperation does kind of get a little bit more pronounced. Uh, you know, like if you guys are ordering like expensive things like fine liqueurs or steaks or things that are higher end, his desperation gets a little bit more pronounced and Gary picks up on that. I try to pay him drinks to make him speak more. Seems like it won't be that hard. Uh, no, he has a copious ap uh, uh, appetite for alcohol. So I'm asking. Sorry, what was that? I'm copious asking you. Oh, <laughs> sorry again. Copious, yeah, copious amount of alcohol and conversation. Yeah, trying yeah. to ask how come uh, a man such as him doesn't have um, have like people that stand him up and things like that. Um, so gradually over the course of the dinner, well, truth be told, uh, business, business has been uh, off of late. Um, you know, there's been some, there's been some occurrences, uh, people on safari who don't listen, bloody fools, go off wandering the trails by themselves. Uh, the animals are the animals are wild. The animals are gonna do what animals do. Uh, but uh, once uh, once there's been one death on your on your lands, uh, people start to start to 
spread rumors like how you can't keep your uh, your guests safe uh, and truth been told there's been there's been more than one but um, if I don't if I don't get business soon then I'm gonna you know gonna lose everything that you know me and my wife built that would be terrible I mean well at least she's not here to see it so there's that but uh, I know I was I was hoping that I know miles is a hunter I was hoping that maybe you know he would bring his group uh, you know if miles miles bagged the animal maybe the, gets the animal that's responsible for this you know that would definitely help the rumors eh? yes uh, certainly can i take a look at the at miles cheering a dose at him what did you lose them to Ryan? uh the the guests uh i believe there's a i believe there's a lion that has uh, developed a taste for uh, for man Chris, we ran into monsters that easily could have passed as line attacks, right? Uh huh. Frequently. Yeah, I have a bad feeling about this. <laughs> well, I mean, we need, like, out of character. This is a good thing because we needed a lead. <laughs> I mean, we could, could check out that aunt. Uh, we also. Like, you know well, Nairobi. Yes. We're looking uh, for a specific place and also to to find some information on an expedition that went before us that turned sour. Maybe you could help us with those two tasks and we could compensate you for your assistance. Uh, when you talk about compensating him, his like his whole demeanor just kind of shifts. Um, I, I, if you can assist me, I would be happy to assist you. Because we we need to hire a guide. Because the place we we looking for we know is in is in Kenya, but exactly where is still a bit foggy. And a previous expedition came to Nairobi and suffered a terrible fate. But we need to understand better and find out what happened. But the story you tell about that beast, tell me there might be more about it. So might be something we want to take an eye on. Uh, Mile, do you think it's something we could try to help you hunt down? Everybody, give me a hard psychology roll. Oh dear. Ah, in my part. In my part. Yep. You just did a regular difficulty one or a hard one? Oh, sorry. How do we change that? If you uh, just click on it, it'll give you the option. Yeah. Oh, okay. Let me get that done. Ooh, Evelyn. Um, so, uh, when you guys mentioned this uh, this expedition uh, that you're looking into, just for uh, for like the briefest of moments, there's a look of panic on his face. Uh, 
like if if you if you weren't so keenly aware of human nature <laughs> you would not have noticed and panic. it. <laughs> there wasn't seen if I wasn't so keenly aware of panic and what that looks like on different men's faces. <laughs> Specifically Lord. <laughs> Can we casually start name dropping people of the expedition? Just to change that panic into sheer terror. I mean, it <laughs> might be afraid of, it might be afraid of another expedition, so that might fix the problem. Yeah, it might just be expeditions in general that he's afraid of at the moment. Um, Evelyn's going to try to change the topic, though. To um, shipping and imports and exports. So I, none of my none of my business. My business is all local. Yes, but local. I mean, locals would be picking it up and shipping it out. Oh yes, but that's what those people do. <laughs> those people. Yes. And which people would that be? He will go into a uh, fairly racist tirade that I will not do. Wow. <laughs> Good. Barely. That's fun. Huh. Uh, okay. Uh, after, after that begins, uh, Evelyn switches back to talking about expeditions. Okay. <laughs> it's like, nope, fuck this guy. I tried to give you an out, yeah. but you're a larger asshole than I thought you were. <laughs> You know what? No, no, we're just going to torture you for a little bit now. He 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 has what I will uh, I will only call the expected British colonial attitude of the time. Yeah. Okay. Mightly lord the British attitude at the time. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but yes, when you turn back to expeditions, he will he will discuss expeditions that he has uh, that that he has you know taken part in. Um, uh, he will like circle back to like his deeds during the war. He'll talk about uh, Mrs. Carruthers, uh, which is his uh, elephant gun. <laughs> I knew a war hero. I need. A pilot. I'll probably need to find a better. Weapon, probably in the 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 shape of elephant gun. If you had something very big, you needed to die very fast. <laughs> what kind oh. of weapon would this exist? <laughs> uh, he will discuss weapons and stopping power at great lengths. He is he is definitely a very very skilled uh, killer of beasts. Yeah, I'll probably try to go through him to upgrade my equipment. <laughs> like, if it can kill uh, an elephant, maybe it can kill a dimensional shambler. <laughs> um, and he will he will talk uh, with Evelyn about uh, about the war and about the kind of like the toll he takes and he hopes that this veteran that you know, you know, is in a good place. Oh, he is. Uh, and briefly, while he's talking about such a thing, he does look like just like a, like a little bit kind of sad. It's not often that people find uh, find a way to put the what they've seen behind them, so. Oh, he was, he still had his adventures, or has, I suppose. I don't, it's because he's not traveling with us anymore. I keep talking about him in the past, but he isn't. He's perfectly fine in the Americas. Um, he just has chosen a more... Um, well, he was doing some life. research for us about the 
strange motor parts that we'd found. I really should check in with him about those. But yes, his his adventure days were certainly not over until we had we found something that we didn't have anyone local who could answer questions for us. So he took the pieces back to the Americas. Well, perhaps uh, after your time spent with us here uh, on the subcontinent, you will convince him to come down here and try his hand at hunting. <laughs> oh, I think he'd only find one thing here he'd like to hunt. Maybe one thing. Mm, given his friendships, I would say definitely one thing. <laughs> Um, but yes, but um, aside from aside from the kind of like the, you know, definitely that look of panic when you guys mentioned missing expeditions. Uh, aside from that, Colonel Endicott is, you know, loud and boisterous and gets louder and more boisterous. And Gary, his stories do start becoming more and more embellished the more alcohol you give him, but he never stops drinking it. Uh, do we want to talk to him about specifically what we're looking for or do we want to wait for in the train have a little lean closer i think we should ask him while he's drunk although if we ask him here he's going to say it very loudly so maybe we could move this to a different location that's a bit more private but i don't think the man could close his mouth if we paid him to well, let's have our uh, digestive and a room. Mm. Uh. Or ask for a private room here for cigar and drinks. It would need to be very private. We've had enough cultists. We've had a lot of cultists spy on us over the yeah. So I want to know what you want about it. Well, somebody can give me a persuasion roll. That's kind of my job. Yep, please. I'm glad it's yours because it's definitely not mine. <laughs> Nice. Um, so yes, yeah, so he'll he'll uh, agree to like drinks and cigars. Uh, of course and, he will. And he is like super inebriated. Um, but as you guys kind of like lead him to a private room, um, kind of like under his breath. Um, you know, he's at that, he's at that drunken stage where he goes from like happy drunk to sad drunk to sloppy drunk to like emotionally bouncing kind of all over the place. Um, uh, but at a certain point you kind of catch him like very quietly under his breath, apologizing. Who are you apologizing to, uh, Colonel? Um, and he doesn't seem to be paying any attention to you at you guys at all. Uh, but he's he's just kind of like, I'm sorry, I didn't. I just wanted you back. I didn't know what they would do. I'm I'm sorry, and starts like basically like blubbering tears. Uh, but as he says, uh, you know, you kind of catch it as he says like. You know, I just wanted you back. That kind of sinks in with Miles. Um, And we'll call it there. No, this guy has done something stupid. Uh, But yes, you guys are now uh, in Kenya. 
chapter five, I think. Um, I think so. I think so. Uh, and I don't so. know if we're doing them in order, but that's where we are. <laughs> uh, there is there is no actual order. Like uh, uh, America is always first. England is usually second, and then people go other places. Um, I think you said that China is usually like in the last one. China is usually last, but you guys went there third, so. Um, but you guys have uh, you guys survived England, and largely you survived because of that miscast dimensional shambler. Uh, so yay, <laughs> yay! That might be that might be terrible, but uh, I I think I need to learn that spell. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, don't worry, you have fire vampires. Yep, I have fire vampire. That's right. I just need a, a an iron torch. Uh, but we will uh, we will pick this up next week. Uh, Jaime will be away next week. Uh, but if we have everybody else, we will uh, we will play next week. I'll put my spells in the chat. New spells. All right. Uh, so we'll see everybody. We'll see everybody except for Jaime next week. We'll see uh, most of yep. you tomorrow for Forbidden Lands. Yes. And uh, we will. I will try to remember to send Anita the information for a uh, new credit sequence for Kenya. Yes, please. Have a